Hey everyone, welcome back. This is John from Friends With Your Benefits. We all know that bathing suit season is coming up and many of you are taking steps and actions to get your body ready for the summer. Some of you may be looking to do some sort of weightlifting cardio classes, or perhaps you're evaluating changes to your diets. Today, we have a special guest. We have Caroline Susie, our resident dietitian. Caroline, welcome back to the program. Thank you. So Caroline, we've seen all these diets lately, whether or not it's the Atkins diet, keto, dirty keto, talking about the egg diet, and even intermittent fasting. Walk us through which fad diets actually work and what to look out for. Absolutely. So first, I, I want to say one thing to get started. Um, you know, very body positive over here. So to get ready for swimsuit season, put on a swimsuit and sunscreen and you're ready. Um, so I don't <laughs> want anyone to like not feel good about that. Um, but yes, it's okay. Nothing's wrong with with wanting to manage your weight. And um, I know we, we, if you haven't watched our previous video, go back and, and look, I'm sure John, you'll link it. We talked yep. a little bit um, about weight loss on that, but here's the story is that anytime that you create a calorie deficit, you're going to see weight loss. And one thing that's in common with all of those diets that you just listed, whether it's low carb, low calorie, low fat, keto, um, you know, the, the list goes on intermittent fasting the common thing is restriction. You're restricting somewhere. And anytime that we restrict and create a calorie deficit, we're going to see weight loss. I think this goes back to what, what are your goals? Is this, um, are you, are you looking for a quick fix? I hope not. Um, if you're looking for something long-term, that's obviously going to be the recommendation. Um, uh, you know, when we, when we really think best practices with adult weight management, we want um, your, your lifestyle meal plan uh, to be personalized to you and ensure that we're meeting all your needs so you don't have any vitamin or mineral deficiencies. And sometimes we do see that in some of these crazy extreme weight loss diets. They are so restrictive. Um, you know, if you are losing hair and you're not sleeping and you're shaking, you know, things are probably not, you know, red flags everywhere there. We could probably land. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so really making sure that nutrition needs are being met, but you're still in that deficit. Um, so I, I tell my clients that any, any time that um, entire food groups are eliminated, red flags, anytime that you have to buy um, certain products that are sold, that's also probably a red flag. Um, anytime it says like, okay, you don't have to do anything else. Like you don't have to move or do anything. You just <laughs> have to drink this. That's red a dream flag. diet. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So I've been doing this for a long time. I've been, um, been a dietitian for 18 years. And one thing that, that I've noticed, it's like fashion, fashion cycles, like the nineties are totally back with fashion. It is <laughs> the exact same thing with these diets. And it's like, they have a really great marketing team behind them. And these really smart marketing PR people rebrand certain things and then relaunch it. And then what is old is new again. Um, but, but the commonality again is restriction and creating a deficit. So it's very, very interesting. So one thing I recently read in men's health, so I don't know if that's a magazine that you'd recommend for, for diet fads or whatnot, but one thing I read recently is they said that, Hey, there's this thing called intermittent fasting. And according to men's health, they said it really doesn't work. I would just love your take on that, Caroline, whether or not yeah. that is something that people should consider or not. Before, before I address intermittent fasting, I want to go back to what you just asked about reputable sources for weight management and nutrition. And I think it goes back to the source that's writing that article. Again, you want to be sure that you are taking your advice from the nutrition expert, and that is the registered dietitian. So looking for the credentials RD or RDN, that is, that is going to be, uh, that that's what you absolutely want to look for in these things. Intermittent fasting in particular, you know, th this is not nothing new. They, I mean, Perfect. back, I mean, 5,000 years ago that people were fasting huh. and even now in today's practices, a lot of religions, um, have fasting. So, sure. um, nothing new here. It can be done a bunch of different ways. Um, I, you know, it can be restricting during the daytime. So I'm only going to eat during an eight hour window and then fast the other 16. Um, another that's the, the, um, that's one common, another common approach is called five, two, where two days a week are, uh, lower calorie days restricted, usually 500 calories or less. And then the other five days are normal calories. You don't do those two days um, consecutively. You don't do them back to back. You spread them out. I'd say those two approaches are the most common things that we see in the space. 
I think it's important to note that um, if you have any sort of medical condition, um, you want to proceed with caution with intermittent fasting and definitely talk to your doctor. This is not uh, medically appropriate for anyone who's pregnant, who's breastfeeding, who has a medical condition like diabetes or high blood pressure. Um, again, you know, talk to your doctor, but if you are otherwise healthy and like nothing else is going on with you, sure. um, no, this probably won't hurt you. We don't recommend this for athletes either. Okay. Um, but at the end of the day, when you are uh, practicing this form of time restricted eating, you're creating a deficit usually because there's only certain windows that you can eat in. So this way of eating is not telling you what to eat. All foods mm -hmm. are still on the table. It's just telling you when to eat. When to eat. Okay. Yep. Cool. So, so one thing that I saw out there too, is this thing called detoxing, right? So what can you tell us about detoxing? Is that of any value? Uh, no. And I'm going to keep it clean because I know this is a professional <laughs> environment. I will do my best. The only thing detox diets do is detox you of all the money in your wallet. So oh. <laughs> we are born with our, your kidneys and your liver are detoxing you 24, seven, 365. And if they weren't, you would be up, you would be in the hospital. Like something would be wrong with you if those huh. aren't working. So there is no need to, to do that. Your body does that naturally for you 24 seven. So stay away from the detox diet. Yeah. A lot of times those detox teas are just really going to leave you in the bathroom and you will have <laughs> just awful GI issues. So do not recommend this before a date or before <laughs> a vacation weekend. Um, no, there are other, there are better ways to approach weight management. Um, and these products, um, they, they are not going to lead to positive, positive things. On the flip side, what can you tell us about the macro diet? So counting your macros is essentially what carb counting was in the nineties. Mm -hmm. We um, take this approach usually with people that are newly diagnosed with type two diabetes, okay. um, type one diabetes and, or gestational diabetes. So really educating people that need to be on top of foods that affect your blood sugar. Um, again, going to recommend that you work with a registered licensed dietitian to establish your recommended calorie level, and then the recommended macronutrient breakdown for you based on your food preferences and what your goals are. Um, again, one size fits all with this breakdown um, is, is not what we recommend. I think there was a diet in the nineties called the zone diet. Um, but anyway, it, it was a, a standard, okay, we're going to do X amount of carb and protein and fats. Uh, no, taking your food preferences into account, your eating habits and what your goals are. Uh, tracking macros can be beneficial for, for some people. If you have any history with disordered eating, uh, we, we want to definitely recommend that you do not uh, track their other ways to stay on top of your nutrition outside of logging, um, logging your macronutrient consumption. Caroline, thank you very, very much. This has been extremely insightful. And the big takeaway for me is to avoid detoxing. As always, <laughs> if you like the video, you want to see more content like this in the future, we encourage you to like the video, ring the bell. And until next time, thanks for joining. And thank you, Caroline. Thank you.